So here's how I went from this to this without ever actually stepping into a gym. So I've been working out at home for almost three years now and I can tell you it's actually like not too hard to build muscle at home. So in this video I'm going to give you the main exercises you need to focus on to build that muscle and I'm going to give you some tips that I use to help assist my body to actually build more muscle. So let's just get into it. So there are six main exercises that pretty much all other body weight movements are built off of and you really want to spend some time to master and prioritize them and those six exercises are push-ups, pull-ups, dips, rows, squats, and hollow body holds. That will build you a very solid foundation. So push-ups are gonna be like your main exercise to help build your chest muscles and your triceps and a little bit of your shoulder. There are different variations of the push-up that help you target different muscle groups. Normal push-ups, classic, master the normal push-up. And another variation of the push-up would be decline push-ups. That works more of your upper chest. A lot of people actually overlook this variation, but you also got diamond push-ups, which prioritizes more of your tricep. Then you got pipe push-ups, which focuses more on your shoulders, your medial delt and your front delt, or your shoulders. And then you got archer push-ups, which works your chest, as well as building your single arm pushing strength. So if you wanted a one-arm push-up, the archer push-up is pretty perfect for that. So I would recommend you pick two of these push-up variations, one that is a little bit easier that you can do around 15 to 25 reps of, and then pick another harder variation that you can do around 8 to 12, like the pike push-ups or the decline push-ups that are a bit more difficult, but you can start working your way up to them. Okay, so for pull-ups, this is going to be their main exercise to help build your upper back. It is just an incredible, insane, out-of-this-world exercise to build an insanely strong back. If you don't have a pull-up bar around your house or like a door frame pull-up bar, I do have a video on how you can hit your back without a pull-up bar. You can just click the video right here. So for the pull-up, a, a more beginner-friendly version would be the chin-up that helps you engage more of your bicep and it makes the pull-up a little bit easier but once you get good at chin-ups doing the normal grip pronation pull-ups this is just gonna be like your best friend to building an insanely strong back but once you get good at those you can start pulling your hands a little bit wider and start doing wide pull-ups and then once you start getting really good at wide pull-ups you can also start trying archer pull-ups this is gonna build you that insanely strong one arm pulling strength so because pull-ups are a lot harder to do than push-ups the reps are gonna be a lot lower so I'd recommend you pick a variation that you can do around 8 to 10 reps of. So whether that's chin-ups, pull-ups, or if you can't do those, assisted pull-ups with like an assistant band. Get your reps in, pick that variation, and then slowly work your way up to harder variations to get stronger. But yeah, pull-ups, can't go wrong with that. It is just an incredible exercise. And the next exercise is going to be the dips. And the dips really focus on your lower chest as well as your triceps. So if you combine the dips with your push-ups, you're going to build that well-rounded chest as well as get bigger arms by prioritizing more of your triceps. And these are pretty much my favorite bodyweight exercise. They just feel so good to do. A couple variations, it's just gonna be the bench dip. This one, the farther away your legs are, the harder the exercise is gonna be. And then once you can do those, you work on normal dips. Last variation would be explosive dips with a slow negative, which pretty much means you go down as slow as possible and then you explode up. This is gonna make your chest and triceps absolutely burn. There's not too much to talk about about dips. I just think the normal dip will do you justice. So just pick one of these three variations and start working your way up. Don't try and rush through the dips. Make sure you're doing slow and controlled reps. This goes with all other exercises. You know, you're just cheating yourself. So just control your reps. Okay, so the next exercise is gonna be the rows. And the rows are gonna help you build your lats, your rhomboids, like your middle in between your shoulder blades as well as your biceps and just like the dips there aren't too many different variations that I would really focus on at the moment and that's just gonna be the normal row you can use like a, a table just make sure it's a sturdy table that it won't you know fall over as soon as you start pulling on it so it's got to be a sturdy table and then what you, what you can do to make the exercise a little bit harder is to elevate your feet a little bit higher the higher your feet are elevated the harder the row is gonna be but yeah those two variations are the two that I would focus on work around 10 to 12 reps and then mess with the tempo once you get strong you start doing it slower to really activate more muscle fibers and build a stronger back and it's at this point where a lot of people tend to have a lot of complaints in the bodyweight calisthenics world that's gonna be around squats so a lot of people make fun of calisthenics athletes for not training their legs you can only go so far only your body weight and leg exercises you can build incredibly strong legs just not very big legs and the main reason for that is is because you know you're standing on your feet all day you're walking upstairs your legs are pretty used to carrying your entire body weight quite often so training them with bodyweight squats isn't going to get you very far if you're just starting bodyweight squats are perfect some other variations would be the sissy squat that works your quads as well as strengthens your knee 
which is pretty cool. And then assisted pistol squats help you work on your single leg squat strength and help build you know, your quads and your balance as well. Once you get really strong legs by doing assisted pistol squats, you can work on pistol squats and that's gonna help build you super strong legs as well as pretty good balance in your legs. That's gonna be the highest you can really go. Once you've unlocked the pistol squat, you can do other variations like the dragon squat or the shrimp squat. But after that, to get really big legs, you either have to train your legs an insane amount of volume or you just have to go to weighted movements, which is why you'll see a lot of calisthenics athletes actually doing like barbell squats and other weighted leg exercises to hit the legs a lot more effectively because body weight can only get you so far. You'll be surprised. A lot, a lot of people that have super strong legs, super high squats, can't even do a pistol squat. So it's gonna be really impressive if you can. And then from there, you'll already have strong legs and then you can work on bigger legs if that's what you want. And then the last exercise is gonna be the hollow body hold when you're laying with your back on the ground, if your shoulders off the ground, you lift your legs off the ground and your core is just stabilizing your body. That's an amazing exercise. There are so many core exercises, but with calisthenics, a lot of people don't actually know that pretty much every single body weight movement, you should be engaging your core. So whether that's with push-ups, you should be squeezing your abs with pull-ups, you're squeezing your abs with squats, you're squeezing your abs with dips, you're squeezing your abs, so on, so on. You're literally activating your core every single time you're doing an exercise. The reason for that is the core's main job is to stabilize your body. So if you're squeezing your abs every single time you're doing push-ups, you're training your abs. So let's say you're already pretty good at using your body weight. You can do quite a few push-ups, quite a few pull-ups, quite a few dips, but you just wanna make it harder and build a bit more muscle. The way you're gonna do that is by adding more resistance. And that's by getting yourself the backpack, loading that sucker up, with books and that way it's gonna be a lot harder and you can continue to do the same body weight movements. You're just gonna add more resistance that way weighted calisthenics, which is absolutely insane at building strength. Make sure you track the amount of books you use. So if you don't have a scale to like measure how much weight you're putting on, just measure the amount of books and then that way you can see if you're actually improving. And then every week you wanna add more books to make it heavier. That's gonna be the main way you can build more muscle with body weight movements if you don't have any weights at home. And that's just gonna be by loading a backpack up with books. So here's just an example of a workout. If you're just starting calisthenics, this is a perfect example. If some of these exercise variations are too difficult, you can totally just make them easier. Some of them are too easy, just make them a little bit harder. But that's a nice example of a beginner calisthenics workout. And then here is more of an athletic beginner to really start building that foundation. Try out the workout. If it's if it's not really suited for you, you can switch up a little bit. This is just to give you an idea of how I would tailor a workout. And these are for full body workouts. So if you want to do like push pull legs or upper lower split, you know, by all means, make your own workout. Make sure you're just challenging yourself enough to actually start building some muscle and some strength. So now that I've given you all the information you pretty much need to start working out and start building some muscle, here's just a few more things you can start doing to help your body build more muscle. And the first thing you can do is start adding more protein to your meals, whether that's meats, eggs, dairy. If you're like a vegan or vegetarian, you can use beans, legumes, leafy greens, kale, you know, all that good stuff. That will help your body build muscle and repair it a lot more effectively and it makes your meals a lot more satiating. As well as eating more fruits and vegetables, give your body the right nutrition. If you eat healthy fruits and vegetables, you'll have more energy to work out even harder. That way you can train harder, you know, effectively build more muscle if you have more energy. Try and add more protein to your meals as well as eating more fruits and vegetables. This is gonna help you build muscle and be a lot healthier in overall. So the next best thing to do is to make sure you get at least seven to nine hours of sleep. Working out doesn't actually build muscle. Working out actually tears down the muscle. And then when you sleep and recover is when your body actually starts to rebuild and starts to regrow and build stronger muscles. Making sure you get at least seven to nine hours of sleep will make sure that your body actually has enough time to rebuild the muscle to come back stronger. And over time, that will make your muscles bigger. And the last thing that you can do, and it will tie everything all together, is to stay consistent. Your body your body hates building muscle. It really does not want to do that. You have to give your body a reason to actually build muscle. So make sure you train hard enough and that you train consistently. It is worth so much more to train three times a week consistently than it is to train super hard on one day and then rest for a whole week. Consistency, especially when you're beginning, is super important. So just train in a consistent way. An easy way to keep track. I have this calendar here that I X off every single time I work out. I've been doing it ever since I started. So that's something you can do. Eat more protein. Eat more fruits and vegetables. 
get your sleep and stay consistent as well as working out that's how you build muscle it's super simple it's just not very easy that's why a lot of people don't do it so if you want to see some ideas on how you can buy groceries to build more muscle you can click this video right here i go through my entire grocery haul but yeah without further ado thank you so much for watching and peace out